So true. Blood Bowl is my favorite sport. I like to fight orcs up and down the court. Only I don't like to fight orcs. I like to fight... Um, well, like, I know we lost to elves, but I, I did like that we were beating them up pretty good. I, I Humans as well. I think humans we could beat up on pretty well. Rats, maybe? Turn one, I'm thinking Lana War elves. She's like, eh. Turn two, Abbot of Carol Keep. She's like, eh. Finally, I played Siege Rhino, the card I knew she wanted me to play anyway. And she's like, well, if that's what you want, it resolves. Daryl, I looked my two-headed giant straight in her optic stems. And I said, I scoop. I can't beat that. You think I can beat that deck? What's that deck called? What's the, I forget the one with Siege Rhino and Gideon. And uh, I think it's called the, it's Voros Twins. Oh, Abzan Midrange. That's right. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that uh, me trying to win a game of Blood Bowl 3 is more futile than when I tried to beat my wife's Abzan mid-range deck with blue-black aristocrats? Minus two. A minus two. Okay, minus two. I don't understand why the deck is called aristocrats either. Is no Nobody's taking a poop on anybody else's chest. All you're doing is like summoning zombies and then killing them and then bringing them back to life. Congrats on the daycare, but please explain the influencer thing. I assure you, I have no idea what you're talking about. We did get um, a, a Monday to Friday, nine to five daycare for our daughter that she can be in for like the next two and a half years, which is beautiful. Went through a couple of interviews, got, got our chain yanked around, have some great places that uh, after we finish the interview, they're like, so you do, would you like a, a morning slot or an, an afternoon slot? Can we take both? No, that's illegal because we don't have a yard for the kids to play in. Oh, also, um, we uh, are on normal school calendars. So we work September till the last week of November, take all of December off in the first two weeks of January. Then we work January to the first week of March, take a week off for spring break. Then we work the second week of March till the third week of June, and then we're off all summer. Oh, and we're only open Monday to Thursday for like the every other uh, week that normally would be a full calendar. Yeah, sure, based for them is probably why they got a whole bunch of fucking slots open, unlike every other daycare in the city. You don't understand, my streaming schedule, my YouTube schedule, is the way that it is because of the constrictions placed on us by daycare right now. I'm actually stoked that starting in May, my ass is going to have Friday afternoons back. I could start doing two dedicated YouTube videos a day instead of just doing... Um, the uh, the one Super Auto Pets video is pretty exciting. We made it through the the first three years of the baby's life. Well, I mean, she's not three yet, but we're getting there. Was she lying? Was she lying about what? I have no context for what you're asking me. <laughs> I have I have no idea what's going on. She said you called yourself an influencer. I did. People ask me, hey, what do you do for work? I say my wife and I are both influencers. It's just the easiest way to explain what I do to, to normies. I don't, I honestly don't care what I, what I call myself for a job. We've been through many different uh, eras. What do you, oh, we're content creators, we're YouTubers, we're streamers. People understand the term influencer. The I influencer won the nomenclatural battle. Nobody knows what a streamer is, by the way. If, if, if you're like 12 to 40, you might know what a, an influencer is, or sorry, what a streamer is. But if you're over 40, a streamer is like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Paramount, Peacock, etc., etc. I don't mind calling myself an influencer. Content creator sounds like you make pornography. YouTuber... I don't know. I just don't feel right saying YouTuber. It's not like exactly what I do for one. And also it sounds like I'm 13 years old. So I just say influencer. That's, that's the, it's the easiest term. I've been asked a, like a thousand times by, by people who have normal jobs. What do you do for work? I've tried every combination. 
I say I'm an influencer. It gets the it gets the follow up question. Oh, what do you do? Like what what specifically do you do? I say I str I stream and make YouTube videos of video games. 100% of the time. Next question: What video games do you play? I've tried. Oh, you know, I play indie games. Oh, really? Like what? Oh, I play The Binding of Isaac. There's this cool game called Spelunky. It, you always get like, oh, I played like Tetris when I was a kid. Oh, I played PlayStation 1 when I was a kid. I've realized, here's the conversational flow. What do you do for work? I'm an influencer. My wife and I stream video games online and also make YouTube videos. What games do you play? Oh, I play everything. And then that's... That's the perfect jumping off point. No, regardless of their level of awareness of the video game industry. I've, I've tried to introduce the concept of Binding of Isaac a hundred times. It's never caught. You cannot teach your financial advisor what the Binding of Isaac is. They're not, they got other things on the go. They got their own life to, to live. They got to worry about the fact that the... Yield curve has been inverted for like, you know, 17 months straight or something like that. Is this 40k? No, don't make the same mistake I did. The Warhammer fans... Listen, I don't want to insult the Warhammer fans. Because I think that if I insult the Warhammer fans, Warhammer fans would probably agree. They would, they would be like, nobody insults Warhammer except me. Also, I hate everybody at my local game store that plays this. Oh, Nathaniel always takes um, 45 minutes to make every turn in Blood Bowl. I know the turn timer is 45 minutes, but at the same time, you know, he doesn't have to clock every single time. Would you play this on the toilet instead of Super Auto Pets? Yeah, I would say if I wanted, um, like, hemorrhoids for the rest of my life. Seems like a great way to end up taking, like, 80-minute poops, for sure. Listen, I did not take a 90-minute poop the other night. It was like a 75-minute poop, and it was 75 minutes because it was a 15-minute poop. But the freaking, uh, oh, let's go, we just got the push. Because the clocks went forward an hour. It was only a 15-minute poop. The problem, just the clock made it one hour longer because as soon as it hit 2 a.m., it went straight to 3. Do you have a blood bowl? What are you, my gastroenterologist? Take a poop on your next flight to Korea, then you'll get one while you cross the international date line. Um, I would never poop on an airplane unless there was no other option. Now, I'm not saying I've never done it, but uh, it's definitely something that I, I endeavor not to do unless there's, unless I basically can't hold it. By the way, this is why everyone hates the, the Blood Bowl community. This is the reply that I got. <clears throat> Safe roll with a loner and against a blocker. <laughs> this is why it's just the same seven dudes coming to your local game store, okay? We have to work on our, our bedside manner. When someone expresses a willingness to, uh, to learn a game that is inscrutable, we could meet them in the middle is instead of being like, wow, it's almost like they haven't played 90 hours of this inside a sauna in, in Helsinki, you know? We, we, people always lament the fact that, uh, you know, not, as, as, not enough people are into their hobbies. Oh, I really wish this game was bigger so they would actually make, like, a good version of it. And then uh, as soon as somebody's, like, interested in... Hang on. As soon as somebody's interested in uh, playing it, they're like, You made a mistake, lol! Anyway. I got banned from chat yesterday for saying NL is bad as Super Auto Pets. Listen, you're lucky I... I, I unbanned you. What you typed in chat was... Just your ass at the game. It wasn't even like a... Uh, there was no joke. No, Corey, that's a different guy. Another guy typed, you're, even though you play this game all day, you're too bad to play hard mode, which is kind of sad. And I, I banned him. And then he said, oh, I guess you're only allowed to be, you're only allowed to insult people if you're funny. And I was like, yeah, dude. Have you ever had like a friend before? That's how, this is the way of the world. It's exactly how it goes. But anyway, you're, you're okay. I think all you said is your ass at this game. 
and then your unbanned request was not apologetic. A good coach. But that's okay. You're, it was more like, I guess I won't say that in the future. And I was like, you know what? This is the internet. That's just about the maximum level of self-reflection that I could possibly ask for. And it was more than the other person who submitted a non-ban request, which probably worked out in your favor, psychologically. Did you see any of the Oscar-winning films? Uh, no films won an Oscar except for Everything Everywhere All at Once. I have not seen it yet. It winning every Oscar. I was already going to see it. I'm not going to hold it against it that it won like nine Oscars. Let's put it that way. It's still, it's, it's, on my, it's on my list when I get two hours of uh, like time in one block instead of like three minutes, 40 times over the course of a day. NL loves to be contrarian. I, what, what's contrarian about what I just said? Hearing that the movie is good but not really liking the Oscars either way? There's nothing contrarian about that. You didn't see All Quiet on the Western Front? I saw the original in like, uh, well, I mean, it came out in like 1931 or whatever, but I saw the original in, uh, in school. You see Cocaine Bear? No, I haven't seen uh, anything, as always. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Because they're the ones who had it. Even ground. Are you the are you the one who who originated the copy pasta? Because I just timed out three people for typing it. Okay, so it's just if one of them almost got KO'd with no apothecary rerolls. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, I'll accept the blood bowl backseating, but the the parenting backseating is uh, it's next level. Let's put just put it that way. I'm not gonna time you out because you've apologized. And I'm not going to untime out the person I timed out because I forgot their username. But I, I apologize to them. But also, just because you if you see something shitty in chat, you shouldn't just immediately control A and then, uh, like, paste it again. Like, of course it's going to be, uh, it's going to be offensive. That's not a stray. Like, you did it to yourself. Do you also dislike Blood Bowl backseating? No, I don't mind it if it's helpful. Sometimes, like, what, the number, and I shouldn't even tell you this because we've already ruined Twitch chat this week, but... Not in my chat, but in every other streamer's chat. Sometimes people will say, this is the last time I'm going to type this. And then they type some shit that they've typed 75 times that I've seen 75 times, but have not like said that I've seen it. And then they type it again like a second later. And then you're like, I'm just gotta, we gotta, we gotta stop this, man. You should get some coaching. I'm all, the, the last thing that's going to happen in this is getting backseated in the chat and then also getting backseated in the damn call. If anything, I just need like a therapist in the call to remind me that the stream's only five hours long and then like at 2 p.m. I can eat lunch and then take like a nice walk outside. Plus, any streamer who's actually good at a game will tell you like... Just being good at a game is not... Um, it will not immunize you from being backseated. You go to Shroud's chat. You go to, you know, uh, Hafu's chat in, in TFT. You'll see the same thing. You'll see people who just downloaded the game yesterday being like, why didn't you go dwarves? People are backseating Hikaru in chess. <laughs> I have seen that. No shot. The thing is crazy is that it's probably a non-zero chance there's been a, at least one time where it's been helpful, though. Everybody's got blind spots now and then. Now, with me, there's like a 70% chance that the backseating is helpful. For Hikaru, it's probably like a .01. Oh, they put it into the into Stockfish. That would, that would explain it. All right. I mean, maybe I, w I wouldn't... I don't know if I would push another dude out of the edge and then have him get his throat stepped on, but... They need more defenders if they're gonna stop the ball. I'm getting outbashed by humans. It's driving me crazy. Even ground. It's okay. Just relax, okay? It's okay. I do appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> it's just a, it's a valuable lesson for both of us. It's not a Findom arc. I don't insult people to get them to sub. I would rather they didn't say... Things that annoyed me in the first place or offended me and hurt my feelings. And, it, you know, that's not... 
that's, that's just an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But it's the parenting backseating that, that is the most annoying for sure. Like somebody uh, in the unban requests, they did, they, the same person who said, like, you're too stupid to play this on hard mode, which is sad because you play this game all day. They have a two-year chat history that I scrolled through like a psycho myself. That was just, um, it was just two years of, of just hate chatting, which I can barely put myself in the mindset of. And then occasionally they would type like a Joel. But most of it was just like, why are you so dumb? You don't know what you're talking about. If you thought programming was a new way of thinking, you must not have understood math in high school. Just like insane stuff. Um, but the one that really got me was when they typed, uh, oh no, you can't find a daycare? That's because cities aren't made for families. You sound like a crotchety old man. Like people that don't have kids and literally like cry and poop their pants when there's a kid in the Red Robin. Those same people are also going like, Stay out of Milwaukee, okay? If you have a, if you're under the age of 18, don't come to Milwaukee. This city full of barcades and driving ranges and bowling alleys is for serious career-oriented adults only. I'm not insulting Milwaukee. I'm insulting like one person who in my head lives there or like lives in a suburb outside of it and knows if he gets a job at one of the tech companies that he can afford like a condo in the downtown core of Milwaukee, okay? It's all headcanon. It's not, none of it is based in reality. If you scroll through chat, you got a lot of great game suggestions. No, there's not a lot. There's like three. Also, you don't even want, I, I was concocting bits in my head. They were psychotic. Chat before the stream starts is just trauma dumps. I hate my life. Chat when the stream is actually ongoing. Fuck you. I hate you. You suck. Eat shit. Chat when I'm in the bathroom. Please play my favorite game. Please play my favorite game. Please play my... The shit's driving me crazy, man. I'm considering converting to Satanism. Have you ever had a pet bat? Isn't... um. Another sniper? Absolutely, even at the cost of two level threes. Um, isn't Satanism just like, um, help me? It's just like atheism, but you love to argue even more? I watched a documentary about Satanism on Netflix. Seem like, you know, nice individuals that also just like to get in the arguments for things that I agree with, but just can't be fucked, honestly. <laughs> I was not like, uh, I didn't watch the documentary and go, oh, I disagree with them at all. I watched the documentary and I went, better you than me, guys, better you than me. I did also like that all the Satanists in the movie dressed like it was the Matrix. By the way, I did see Seth Rogen, um, the picture of Seth Rogen at the Oscars. A lot of people uh, tweeted it to me. Take a first pot, bro. I, I can't deny that I believe Seth Rogen has been taking care of himself. I still think I clear him in a fight, but I will say that, that I, maybe we have to revisit that six months from now. I think I clear him for now. He saw the video. <laughs> Dude, I already got Bellingham on my ass. So I can't have Seth Rogen on my ass. There's like too much local, there's too much heat on me locally. Where do you think he lives? Well, I know he lives in LA, but he's probably back from time to time. Note, note to self, don't talk shit about Nathan Fielder. After the internet comes for your ass, you might just, you know, find him at Jam Cafe for brunch one day. You gotta answer for your crimes. That's why I don't talk shit about Joe Biden. Let's be realistic, like with no disrespect. If you live in Delaware, the only thing you should be worried about talking shit about is like a uh, a numbered corporation that is headquartered there for tax purposes. You could pretty much shit talk like any individual in the United States. What are the odds that they actually have a residence in Delaware? Like, you know, less than 0.5%. But be careful, because if you start, you know, coming for the corporations, I don't know, probably like 20% of American public companies are, are headquartered in Delaware. And Aubrey Plaza as well, apparently. Yes, Aubrey Plaza as well. Check the vampire skill tree. Let me, let me let me build a run first here, then we'll take a look at it. 
Again, it's like, you know, just because you get a big burger on your plate, here's the thing. I'm not, I'm never, there's a constant in life. I'm never unhinging my jaw to eat a hamburger, okay? So if you serve me a burger that's 15 inches tall, I'm taking a little bite of like the bottom bun and then I'm moving up as much as I can. And then it's like patties one to three clearly missed. And then I'm getting a slice of Havarti and a slice of Swiss. Then I'm getting one bite that's basically just salad because it's all the toppings. It's the best that I can do it, okay? So like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna give me a burger that's that tall, you can't tell me to, to unhinge my jaw. We'll, we'll take it piece by piece. We're gonna modularize it. I'm so happy that the world is, is coming around to this, you know, thick burgers are too much take. Because it was not a popular take for a while. I was, I've been saying it since 2013, maybe even earlier. And people were like, you know, minus two, just eat the burger. Why are you complaining? You know, you complain about everything. And there's some truth to that, I suppose. But I don't complain about a small burger. Very rarely have I gotten a burger and been like, this is too small. I honestly, for, for a while there, I just stopped ordering burgers. Because I, you never knew whether you were going to get something that was like a reasonable size. Not even like from a calorie standpoint, just from like a, I don't want to pull a tendon in my mandible. So sliders? No, I'm just like a, just like a normal burger. Because we've gone from like, like normal burger used to be like, I always think of like the McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. It's not as small as a McDonald's cheeseburger. It's not as big as a Big Mac. But they went crazy, man. Like, especially once pubs started to open up on like every corner, once other businesses all faded after the global financial crisis, they... Every, every single brew pub just started offering, it, like the classic burger was like a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. But then they're like, with the 17 paper towel burger, it's got 15 patties. It comes served with a toothpick shoved through a Bloody Mary. And then that Bloody Mary has a corn dog on top of it. Like it just, it got to the point where it, it was just ridiculous. So I'm, I'm happy that I think we've moved back to... Maybe at least more people are open to the idea of a, a, a more reasonably sized hamburger. I wouldn't even mind, like, if, if you're... We've experimented with tall burgers. Some of them work, some of them don't. I would love to have, like, what about just a wide burger? Nobody's ever experimented, really, with raising the circumference of the burger. They just put more and more toppings on it. If the patty is great, give me, give me a, a, like, a... a plate-sized hamburger that's only like, you know, half an inch tall or something like that. I'd be into that. I'd at least give it a try. We don't go out to eat that much anymore, partly because we have to justify our Costco membership and partly because every restaurant we go to needs to have um, parking, ample seating, high chairs available, and then like something that a two-year-old can eat without complaining too much. But even before we had uh, our daughter, I was like a once every five years order a hamburger type of guy. It would have to be like, the, I would really have to have a craving. I would order a sandwich from time to time for sure. But the burger had to, it had to be right. No, I've had a lot of burgers in my life, but like, well, here's the thing. When I first started going to restaurants, like by myself or with my friends as a teenager and a young adult, I got the burger like every time because I thought that's what adults did. Then, when I stopped being such a picky eater, I started ordering things that were actually in like the entree section instead of sandwiches and burgers. Started experimenting a little bit more. And then I just, I didn't really see a good reason to go back to the burgers at most places. Some places they got a, they got a heck of a burger, but, um, but now as an adult, I mean, I eat hamburgers on an annual basis, for sure. M mostly I would cook them at home. Even then, it might be like two or three times in the summer. At a restaurant, I'm like, uh, it's a very low chance I order the burger. Relatively high chance I, I get a sandwich of a sandwich is on the menu. I understand it's like a, a bit of a semantic difference, but I don't know. People don't seem to be making that many tall sandwiches. And if they do, they're very obviously lampshaded. It's called like the, you know... Burj Dubai Club Sandwich or something like that. But sometimes you're just like, I'll take the cheeseburger, please. And it comes with like 15 onion rings under the top bun. And you're like, come on, man. What am I supposed to do with this? I, it's ridiculous. Haven't been to Subway in a while, for sure. 
I mean, like... <laughs> You're gonna make me say it. I think Subway is, like, pretty bad, but I like it more than the average person. The main thing that, that brought me to Subway was convenience. But, um, there's been a, a, a few too many times, maybe, that I've, that I've gone to Subway and I've had to wait in line for, like, six minutes to start making my sandwich. And that, at that point, I'm like, brother, I could just be in and out of the grocery store with, with bread and meat by then. I could be making my own sandwich for a fraction of the price. No, I, even, like, pre-ordering on the app doesn't work at some of the Subways in Vancouver because they, like, we can't have nice things. So you, uh... Uh, some of them, I've seen them with the racks for online orders, but uh, the, a lot of the subways here got rid of the racks. And now you have to go up to the front and be like, um, hey, I placed an online order, but apparently like every subway, subway franchisee of all time is insanely cheap, so the entire store is like manned by one 17-year-old who's making 15 sandwiches at the exact same time. No disrespect to the to the subway employee, by the way. I'm disrespecting the, the the franchisee here. Like at least at the at the bubble tea shops, they usually got like one high school senior taking orders, and then like one high school senior in the back working like seven blenders at the same time, keeping society functioning. But a subway, I mean, like you you need at least like two people to make a subway work, because one person follows a sandwich from start to finish. It's not Henry Ford's uh, production line, you know, where they're passing them off. Because then you got to reintroduce yourself to the... And then you, you reintroduce yourself to the... cat. You ever go to a Subway and the cashier is like, what did you order? Is it... Do you want... I know I'm making my own sandwich. Do you want me to punch the shit into the till too? It's crazy. You got to... Two to three workers at a Subway. That's... That's... A, and I don't even know, there might be more in the back. Somebody's got to be cutting up the produce, I guess, but... The subway's kind of in, like, a death spiral, right? Nobody goes there anymore, so they probably have, like... You know... They, no Less desire to hire more staff, because there's less demand. But then, you know, eventually everybody reaches a breaking point where you're like, Oh, it's been 21 minutes to get my cold-cut combo. I could have just, you know, eaten at a real restaurant by this point. If even I'm giving up on Subway, then then I think it's I think they're cooked, man. You ever taste Quiznos? Yeah, I mean Quiznos was like it was better than Subway. Quiznos, why, Subway walked so Quiznos could run. The metaphor doesn't really make sense because Subway stole like the toaster oven idea from Quiznos. You know what the the main marketing problem with Quiznos was for me is that at Subway there's only two sizes. So you could trick yourself into thinking a six inch is small, and then a twelve inch is regular. You're like, well, I'm not, I'm not a small. I'm an adult, so give me the regular. I'll take a foot long baguette stuffed with ingredients. But then, Quiznos had like a six inch sub and a nine inch sub, and you're like, what the hell? I'm getting the large, but the large is three inches shorter than the Subway sub. Sure, it tastes better. But I'm not at the sandwich place or something that tastes good. I'm at it for like the maximum amount of like uh, carbohydrates and cured pork products to shove into my gullet in, in a socially acceptable setting. You're not wrong though, someone in chat typed, if you had five bucks back in the day, you rode your bike to the gas station, you were feasting. Oh man. I mean, if you had any amount of money from a bill, like... I mean, you, you could buy chips, candy, and... Uh, and a drink. And have a little bit of change left over. Nowadays, if you got a $5 bill in your pocket, you go to a 7-Eleven, you pick up two things, they're like, they, they tell you the total and you're like, hang on, let me get my card out of my wallet. Also, they're like, please sign up for the rewards program. And you're like, no, I'm not interested. And then they're like, no, 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 you'll save money if you do it. And I'm like, no, I'm really not interested. And then they're like, okay, fine. And then when they turn around the card reader, it says like, please enter your email address to join the rewards program. And you hit not interested. And then the clerk is like, no, for real, like you'll save money. Shit drives me crazy. Then it's like, enter a tip. <laughs> tip culture has gone a little too far. Another reason that I, that I stopped going to Subway is that they finally succumbed to it, which is like, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's free money for most patrons, but like... Now, like, 
They want you in and out of the store as fast as possible. They have the audacity to ask for a tip at the end. Here's, here's a tip. I'm going to start making my ham sandwiches at home and saving $11. I don't mind tipping a, like a, a local business, but like tipping a, tipping a subway, it just seems like I'm contributing to the erosion of the character of my neighborhood. No, actually, someone said NL crosses the border to go to Subway. One of the last times I went to Subway was in the U.S., and it was almost like the last straw. I was like, why is this place so fucking busy? Like, at the very least, in, uh, in Canada, people have the good sense to not really go to Subway, which is why I find it so audacious whenever there's a lineup. But I went to, like, a, a suburban Subway in Blaine, Washington, and it had a lineup of like nine people. And I, it, it took half an hour to get our sandwiches. I was like, what the hell are people doing here? Blaine, what's going on? Everybody had their phone out. They were ordering like six sandwiches each. Nobody likes anything except the, the steak and cheese with four lines of mayonnaise. Like it's, it was out of control. Last time I went inside the Papa John's, literally everyone beside me in the store was a door dasher. It's crazy. I'm, people do be door dashing. I'm definitely, I'm entering like my suburban dad arc. Like I, I can see myself transforming into the kind of guy who's like, you know, my daughter's boyfriend leaves the refrigerator open for like more than two seconds. And I'm like, what are you trying to do kid? Cool down the whole neighborhood. Like I'm at this stage now where like, I'll order a pizza and tip the pizza delivery driver, but like my ass is if if I'm gonna DoorDash something, I'm I'm using Uber Eats, and then I am choosing the pickup option, which incurs no extra fees, and I'm driving to the damn restaurant. I'm I'm regressing to like the 1990s, and honestly, I I like it. I like it. Why not just call the restaurant? I still don't like to like make a phone call if possible. At least, like, I, I genuinely think it's not just phone anxiety. But, like, there's... Because I made some good phone calls this week. Hi, uh, yeah, this is Ryan calling again. I'm just wondering about the application status. Uh, we applied for uh, daycare when our daughter was one day old. She's about six months out from turning three now, and she's aging out of her current daycare. I know you guys are busy. It would just be nice to get a status update. We're free anytime this week. I'll cancel all of my appointments to be graced with one second of your attention. Thanks so much. Here's my phone number. I don't mind making a phone call. I just feel like... The app is a superior way to order food because it eliminates one possible mix-up, which is someone either not hearing me properly over garbled, like, 1920s phone in infrastructure, um, or alternatively, they're, like, half distracted while I'm ordering because they're in a busy restaurant that's got a lot of shit going on, and then they're, like, you know, pretending to write it down, but they're not actually writing it down, etc., etc. By the way, I got a bone to pick. Everybody, and by everybody, I mean like six content aggregators on Twitter. Tweeting about how Rachel Bilson gave an interview. Rachel Bilson, of course, from The O.C. Also from the Zach Braff movie that almost killed his directorial career, The Last Kiss. But uh, she gave an interview. She said she never had an, an orgasm during sex until she was 38 years old. Then they said, oh, look, she started dating Bill Hader when she was 38. Okay, this is not disrespectful to Bill Hader at all. However, I saw some people going in deep and they said, uh, Hayden Christensen is like lying dead in a ditch somewhere after this. Apparently she dated Hayden Christensen when she was a lot younger. That doesn't mean Hayden Christensen doesn't know how to pleasure a woman. That just means that he didn't when he dated Rachel Bilson. He might have picked up some skills afterwards. It's not like just a, you're, you're born with it or you're not born with it. He might have read some books or some articles after that or taken some classes. I'm just saying this dude's getting dragged through the coals. He's, he's probably out here saying it. it's not that I don't know how to make a woman come. It's just that I didn't know back then because I was too busy filming Star Wars. Now that he's got more free time, he probably, he probably dedicated himself to it a little bit more. That's my guess. Anyway, I'm happy for her. That one's for the librarian. 
Hey, librarian, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. What can I say? It's been, you, it, streams have been good, but you, you haven't been feasting in, on Blood Bowl, that's for sure. So here go two more for y'all. If you could run any franchise, what franchise would it be? You're not going to like the answer. Because it's an answer that's based in reality instead of like how 12-year-old kids think that the world works. Hang on, I got to take this guy. I'm not suggesting you're 12, by the way. Suggesting that the question belies a 12-year-old's understanding of how the world works. I would love to run a franchise where it's easy to please the fans. I definitely would not like to run Marvel or Star Wars or Harry Potter or like... I don't want to be in any one of those minefields right now. I would love to run, you know, like a fucking Firehouse Subs or something like that. I think that's the dream. I'm not necessarily passionate about sandwiches or like restaurant uh, management or anything like that. But it seems like as long as you just stay on the straight and narrow, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. Well, like the reason I wouldn't want to do Mar- well, first off, I'm not qualified to run Marvel for a- I'm not qualified to run any of these businesses, but like for a variety of reasons, I'm not qualified to run Marvel. People are like, the fans are easy to please. I don't know. They were when they were knocking out hit after hit, but now like the last few movies have been kind of mid. And they've, uh, I, I feel like there's been a lot more, um, there's like canaries in the coal mine now. I hope Marvel burns to death. What, what the hell are you talking about? Just because you don't, you know, you're, you're sick of like three times a year, like you have to see trailers for something that's like CGI? I don't understand. What's... Sanus Jatter. <laughs> Sorry, I need Daemonic Giantus here. I haven't watched one for years. Okay, but that doesn't mean they have to die in a fire. Like... Not everything has to be like for you. Marvel and Disney ruin the box office? Dude, be honest. Like, your ass is not going to see the Banshees of Inna Sharon in theaters, okay? I'm sorry that... that, that I, uh, I wish that great movies made more money at the box office, but I, I feel like we're in a cold war right now where, like, I want their... The studios, if, the, if their movies are not making money at the box office, if they're 9 out of 10... Uh, art house movie is not turning a profit, then fucking put that shit on digital video on demand the day it comes out. Stop sending it out to die in theaters and just let me watch it in my house. I'll pay you movie theater prices to watch it in my house. Don't like come out with it and then it's like, oh, Tar disappointed at the box office. Yeah, because I'm not paying like a hundred bucks between two tickets, snacks, parking, etc, etc to go watch fucking Tar in theaters. I'll pay you 25 bucks the day it comes out to watch it at home for sure I don't blame Marvel for that. I mean, you're, you're basically blaming them for making movies that people wanted to see If theaters die movies die I'm not gonna go see Shit in the theater just so theaters stay alive. You know, that's you know, what we call that in the business. We call that a bailout I thought we didn't respect those like, wait, what val- <laughs> I mean, this is disrespectful, I guess. I like going to the movie theater, but I, what I- what I dislike is when people are like, Oh, please go see more movies in the theater, otherwise the theater will die. I like the theater, but like, I don't care about the owner of the theater in the slightest, especially because they're like all big chains here now. Um, because like, what do you even do? You got like a fucking- you got a big screen, you got Dolby AVX, and then you're charging me 12 bucks for 75 cents worth of popcorn. And the only reason that I'm going to your business is because, like, you have exclusive rights to play the movies. If you didn't have exclusive rights to play the movies in my ass, if it was a true free market and I could just, you know, I had the option between going to the movies or watching it at home myself or, you know, going to see it at a drive through or a drive-in or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then that would be, like, a different story. Like a hospital, like I get. <laughs> not from like an economic sense, but it's like, I'm not gonna start doing my own open heart surgery at home, you know? You got, um, you got experience, you've got expensive equipment, but like a movie theater, especially these days, aren't you just loading the damn MP4 file onto the computer and then double clicking? Maybe, maybe there's a little bit more to it, but like, 
I think it can't be, it can't be that much more than making sure people don't, like, you know, leave too big of a mess in the seats. You're paying for the screen? Yeah, some of the screens kind of, like, suck, though. I'm not that into the screen, man. That's why, I, I, when I was heavily Marvel-pilled, I was always like, why does everyone say the Marvel movie CGI look, looks like ass? I saw it opening night, it looked pretty good to me. And then I would, like, watch that shit on Disney Plus two years later and be like, no, they're right, that looks like ass. I'm just, I don't know. Like, here's the thing. Maybe it would be good if Marvel wasn't so popular. Not because of any of the reasons that you suggest, just because I'm sick of, like, oh, you saw Black Panther in the movie theater five years ago? How do you enjoy being someone who's killed cinema? And I'm like, how about you shut the fuck up and go to, like, twitch.tv slash Criterion Collection. You'll probably be the only person in chat while they play the Umbrellas of Chernberg. People will show up for five seconds to be like, oh, this movie's a classic, I love it. Then they'll hit uh, Alt F4 and go watch something that's actually entertaining, like the new season of Stranger Things. Shit's driving me crazy. I'm just, I just watch what I watch. It's not... I, I, I don't know if it's just that I'm free from the idea that I should, you know, not watch movies that I want to watch. Instead, I should watch movies that are good for the industry. I don't care about the industry at all. I don't even care about my own industry. I'm just, I'm just wondering what's for lunch today, brother. I'm 34 years old. Like, it's not that old, but it's old enough to be like, you know, inoculated against the idea of please watch this so they make season two. If season one is great, I'll give it a chance. If season one is ass, I'm not putting it on repeat while I'm at work just so that uh, Netflix can tease a season two eventually. We all know that shit's getting canceled anyway. What's for lunch today? You don't even want to go straight from movies back into Costco, okay? Because here's the thing. I mentioned yesterday I need a couple of things that normally I would get at Costco. I'm unwilling to go to Costco for just a couple of things. So I went to another grocery store last night. I bought uh, some kale salad. The kale salad was the same price, same brand as the kale salad at Costco. But at Costco, you get two bags that are joined together in the middle. At this grocery store, for the same price, you only get one of the bags. My ass was like, I should have just gone to Costco. You paid it anyway? Well, yeah, out of convenience. I'll make concessions for convenience now and then. But I'm not happy about it. Next time I'm going to... No, what I would actually do, probably what I should have done, not gotten anything for lunch for today, and then tomorrow, just go to Costco. No, I don't want a Costco sponsorship. Costco should continue to let the patrons market the service by themselves via word of mouth. And just, like, don't waste your money on sponsoring influencers, thus causing you to have to raise your prices and, and ruin the service. Peloton, on the other hand, Peloton should sponsor me. Because, you know what, they already got part of the demographic that feels like they need a life coach that comes with their stationary bike. I think I could do a great job for Peloton of marketing to the cynical, you know, millennial male. Who's like, oh, actually, if anybody ever told me I could do it on a bike, I would immediately refund that. I would turn the bike off immediately and just accept dying a few years early. Oh, I think we've sold more than one Peloton. How has Peloton rewarded me? I don't know, by having like a lot of downtime this month, which has been very annoying. I got a couple of chatters on the Peloton now. We're, we're in a high five chain. Whenever I finish a workout, they high five me. And whenever they finish a workout, I high five them. How much do you charge to get on the mailing list? Depends, I'll look at the analytics for the Blood Bowl section after the stream and then I'll figure out a price point that, that works for both of us. <laughs> Help me. Would you become an instructor if they asked you? Honestly, this is like a pipe dream. Very unlikely to happen. All of the Peloton instructors essentially look like models and have like half a million Instagram followers. Um, but respectfully, yes, because I think the, they make a staggering amount of money. And with, with all due respect, it seems like just about the easiest job in the world. I'm sure there's like behind the scenes stuff that they have to do. 
But genuinely, like some of my favorite instructors release an hour of rides weekly. I'm I'm sure like they're working harder in the 30 minutes that they're teaching than I am in the 30 minutes where I'm taking it. But I'm like, they're, I guess they got 39 hours of other miscellaneous duties in the back, but... Says the streamer? No, like, I'm, as you know, I'm the only streamer who knows how easy being a streamer is. And I think being a Peloton instructor is, is easier just due to the... It seems like there's way less active time on the job. How could my job be easier? Like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing a good job of selling the Peloton here, but that's okay, because I don't work for Peloton anyway. Hey, hang on one second. I, I would like to, uh, the magnet to get much better. That's beautiful. You play video games? Literally, all they do is spin their legs in a circle and then, like, call out the same three groups of resistance and cadence depending on the BPM of the song. Like, it's, I say this without a hint of irony. I think it's actually easier to be a Peloton instructor than it is to be a streamer. It's one of the only jobs on the planet that, that I think you could realistically say that about. And again, I, this is not disrespectful. Like, I, I appreciate the job that the Peloton instructors do. I would hope that either they would correct me of my delusion that it's an easy job, or they would at least be like, yeah, you're right, the, job's, the, dr the, the job is a dream. Time for job difficulty tier list. That could be fun, actually. People would get mad, but like, that's your emotion. That's not my emotion. I would be laughing. Streaming is an easy job, by the way. That would not be like S plus tier difficulty. It would have to be in the bottom tier of difficulty. But you know my ass is putting electrician as like a B tier difficulty. <laughs> I just, the thing is, there's already been enough uh, annoying fallout from the, uh... Ooh, a giant fister, okay. And we, we can always summon more baddies. Like, no matter what I do, the, the game I'm playing could be, like, completely unrelated to animals at all. People are like, please explain your panda take. I just got here. I know you've probably talked about it for 17 cumulative hours on stream, but please, I know you explained it for two hours during the two and a half hour long uh, animal tier list video of the animals you could beat in a fight, but please, can you just recite the exact same things you said again? I don't think I could handle that. Cause like I would, I, I always do my best to lay out like the principles of the tier list first. I would like, First, I would say every job is hard in its own way. I would also say just because I say a job is not necessarily that hard doesn't mean I think I could do it. But as soon as I put like plumber in the tier that is like, I don't know, it seems like plumbers have like a pretty decent work-life balance, make good money and, you know, aren't at huge risk of injury. People would be like, oh yeah, I'd like to see you set up the pipes for a huge a hotel. I'll have you know, my dad was a journeyman plumber and he set up all the pipes in the convention center Westin in, in Massachusetts. You really think you could do that? It tore our family apart. I was laughing so hard when I picked my daughter up from daycare yesterday. Our daughter's, you know, there's great irony in this, of course, for how much I've railed on picky eaters. My daughter is a, a pretty picky eater. I might even say a, a very picky eater. So we've been having struggles getting her to eat uh, vegetables. Fruit's pretty okay, but but vegetables, like, it's it's a genuine struggle. She hates pretty much, like, all vegetables except french fries. And she thinks that french fries, I don't know how she got this idea, she thinks that french fries are made of honey. Like, whenever I'm like, do you like potato? She's like, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, but french fries are made of potato. And then she says, no, daddy, honey. I don't know where she got this idea, but... Either way, at, when I picked her up from daycare yesterday, the the daycare worker was like, um, I made them all vegetable lasagna today, and they all ate it. And I was like, really? She ate it? And she was like, yeah. It had eggplants, uh, mushrooms, zucchini, tomato sauce, cheese, and I, my mind was blown. So I got her in the car, and I was like, honey, did you like the eggplant, or did you like the lasagna? And she went, eh. Yucky. And I said, but they said you ate it. And then she just said, like, without missing a beat, she was like, I took one bite. 
You gotta remember, this is not a teenager. This is a two-year-old. For her to construct a sentence like that is very impressive. It, it was cracking me up. Because the daycare worker was so excited. It's like, yeah, she ate it. And I got her in the car. I took one bite. Yeah! It's rough, though. Doesn't like, uh... Doesn't like carrots. Doesn't like bell peppers. Thinks that she doesn't like potatoes. Doesn't like broccoli, even though she ate so much broccoli as a, uh... As an infant. Does she like Korean food? She likes, um... Jeon, okay. Like, um, Korean style. Oh, well, she, she loves, uh... All sweets. So she loves, like, hotok. And, like, the Korean pancake with the... Red bean or, like, some... Some honey in the middle. American Sunday Pog Champ, Korean Sunday Dan's Game. I would I would plus two that. I would agree with you. I am anti Sunday. You can eat it if you want. I, me personally, it's not my tempo. Sunday, of course, is ice cream with maybe some you know flavored syrup and maybe some nuts, maybe some sprinkles or some toppings. Sunday is like pork blood sausage. Which is just, I mean, I've had it a few times. It's just, uh, just inclined to say it's not my tempo, honestly. I know you've heard of Taking Back Sunday. You catch me in a Korean restaurant, I'll be sending back Sunday. I don't know why I would order it in the first place. To be honest, I guess that's kind of on me. Yeah, we did baby led weaning when, when we, when we were introducing solid food to her. She, uh... She liked, uh, and still likes, like, a lot of fruit that she she started to pick up during that period. Like, she's she's a big mango head. Basically, I know this sounds like complaining. It's not, really. It's just an observation. She basically likes all the expensive foods. Um, she, she is okay with bananas, which are, like, so cheap that it, it feels like you're stealing them even when you pay for them. Um, but apart from that, it's, like, strawberries, blueberries, mangoes. Hey, hey, just chill. Um, grapes. Grapes are cheap? I don't know, brother. I'd, I'd have to minus two you on that one. My frame of reference is like... I'm, I'm not going to do you a disservice and say my frame of reference is bananas, but like my frame of reference is like apples. Apples are crazy cheap. As an apple farmer, how dare you? Oh, relax. You're making more money because I'm sure the apple industry is like subsidized by the government. They want you to keep prices low so they give you a little kickback from my damn tax dollars to begin with. You better watch your tone. 65% of my diet is fruit. Look, that seems a little high to me, but if you're happy with it, if, if, if you're living your best life, more power to you. I mean, one thing's for sure, I wouldn't take any sass from Twitch chat. Unless they give you like a MyFitnessPal link to their ledger of what they ate. Cause like, that's a lot of sugar. Okay, what's, what's, what do you eat, motherfucker? I eat a lot of beef. Whoa, not worried about saturated fats then, huh? I have a snack now and then. Oh, the sodium content. You're not worried about arteriosclerosis? I'm a vegetarian. Oh, just make sure you're taking 17 different multivitamins so that you get all 20 of your essential amino acids. You, could, you can criticize anything, man. I'm not going to criticize someone for 65% of their diet being fruit. Plus, I mean, this is Twitch chat. They probably got the math wrong. Let's be honest. It's probably like 30%. I mean, you could if 35% if of your calorie intake is... Or if 65% of your calorie intake is fruit, I think you're doing great. Or not great, but like probably fine. I mean, like, Chibli's still alive. He said when his power went out, he ate six frozen burritos. And like, as far as I can tell, he's thriving. He was able to travel like internationally. You're probably in a bad spot if like 65% of your daily calories come from like soda or alcohol. That's gonna leave you in a tough spot. I, I, I would criticize that. I would encourage you to maybe change your habits. 65% edibles? Well, it's not that, I mean like 100% of my calorie intake is edibles. Otherwise I wouldn't be eating that shit, you know? Is that what you're talking about? What are your thoughts on whole milk? I'm not a milk drinker, so I, I have no Valid thoughts on whole milk. 
I even, I will say, like I, I, I was looking for breakfast options at the grocery store yesterday, ended up buying some cereal, still didn't buy milk. Like I'm, th that's a habit that's never going to change for me. I'm, I'm a dry cereal guy. It just tastes normal to me. The idea of spending more money to, to get cow juice and then pouring it into my cereal to make it like a weird stew is just, is so strange to me. But I understand that mine is so, my habit is so strange to you. Cut his mic. <laughs> I've, I've never been, I've never enjoyed milk except, as Mario, I've never enjoyed milk except maybe like I'm assuming as a baby. But um, even as a kid, I ate cereal like every day before school, more or less, and uh, never had milk in it. Just don't like the taste. And I still like cereal. No, I don't use water. I just pour it from a box straight into the bowl. Like, it's not, it doesn't need water, it's just, it's not like, um, like, uncooked pasta, where it's like, if you just pour it out of the box onto your plate, you're gonna break your teeth. Like, it's, it's a product that's readily consumable, just, you know, shelf-stable. Doesn't it hurt your teeth? Not at all. <laughs> the, I mean, does it hurt your teeth to eat, like, a potato chip or something? Like, it's the, basically the, it's a pretty similar consistency. I'm just, I, I... Look, I'm not gonna... Th that was not a sane question. That doesn't it hurt your teeth. That's that's not a question. I'm not gonna hold that against all milk users, because that would be disingenuous. All I'm gonna say is that, like... You know, the dry cereal... I think it's just one of those things. If you're used to dry, the milk is gonna seem really strange to you. And if you're used to... Milk, then the dry is gonna seem really strange to you. Like, there's no... There's no middle ground. Who's eating it dry, though? Oh, uh, so when we're talking about Marvel movies, the masses are stupid. But when we're talking about um, cereal eating habits, all of a sudden we're appealing to the majority. Very interesting. I'm starting to think that you, you simply change your principles uh, as you see fit to support your argument. I'm dead. Plus two, plus two, plus two. Look at that. Look at all those plus twos. In many ways. Milk is nutrients? All food is nutrients, dumbass. You can just drink a glass of it on the side. Are your bones brittle? No. Totally fine. I would put my bones up against your bones any day of the damn week, honestly. Plus, I eat a lot of cheese. I think I think my calcium levels are totally fine. I don't know. It's just weird to me. People are like, I don't I don't like chocolate milk. I would rather drink regular milk, aka vanilla milk. But like, if you told people that you put chocolate milk in cereal, they would probably look at you like you're psychotic. Ew! You don't. No, no, no. You only put regular cow titty milk into your cereal. You don't put chocolate-flavored cow titty milk into your cereal. Are you stupid? It's pretty psychotic to put even more sugar into a cereal. No, see, you're, now you're doing the, the milkless no favors either, because now you're making us seem like militant, um, you know, nutritionites. It's not even a flam straight away. Like, if... I'm not going to lie to you. I bought Vector. It's not like I'm, I'm sitting here with Count Chocula or whatever, but at the same time, like... If you wanted to be, like, completely min-max with your health choices, you probably wouldn't be eating cereal for, like, the breakfast in the first place. I'm just... I'm not fighting for people to stop using milk. All I'm fighting for is a, is a place for the non-milk users to also be offered a spot at the high table. To at least have our opinion not mocked derisively on, on social media. It deserves to be mocked? Why, are you a dairy farmer? How are you typing this with, with your 56k modem? Don't you pay by the minute? This is how you choose to spend your time? Look, you're not in danger. If anything, especially if you're from Bellingham, you should be stoked that I don't drink milk. Because I'm like the only Canadian crossing the border, apparently, and not clearing the shelves at Trader Joe's. So I, I think you should watch your tone, honestly. You should, you should shut your mouth when you're talking to me. I mean, I'm, I'm very pro-dairy as far as, like, you know, the food's tasting good. I just, I don't like the base metal for whatever reason. 
but I'm, I'm heavily cheese-pilled. I do think it's a little psychotic for, like, an adult to order, like, a glass of milk at a restaurant to go with their meal, but, like, that's my own personal hang-up, okay? We don't need to get into that. Unless they're eating cereal, apparently, in which case, if they didn't order a glass of milk, I'd be like, what are you, crazy? I know you've got over this before. I, God help me, I can't resist the bait. What are your top buys at Costco? I'm thinking about getting a membership. Listen. Depends on... Depends on what you like to eat. It depends on what you're stocking. If you've got a baby who loves eating croissants for breakfast, stop paying, you know, one to four dollars per croissant at the grocery store. It's ridiculous. Go to Costco, 12 croissants, $5.99. You like frozen pizza? Put a couple of Motor City uh, pseudo deep dish pizzas in your freezer. They're, I mean, it's not going to change your world, but it's pretty good. No one even asked. One person asked, okay? And you got to get a hot dog, like, every single time. I mean, they're $1.50. You would be stupid not to, not to get a hot dog, unless you're a vegetarian, in which case... Honestly, your Costco membership might not be as valuable as, like, other individuals, but caskets are a pretty good deal. I mean, honestly, the glasses were an insane deal. I know you don't buy glasses that often, but, like, new lenses plus frames came to, like, $249 Canadian. It was under the tap limit for my credit card. I didn't even have to use chip and pin. It blew my, it blew my mind. Now, mind you, they only had, like, I don't know, maybe like 30 frames that you could choose from. <laughs> it wasn't like a normal eyeglass store, but still. I hope you know the top institutional shareholders of Costco are BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. Yeah, I mean, the top institutional holders of every corporation that's publicly traded are Vanguard, State Street, and BlackRock, okay? So, like, <laughs> it's... <laughs> They hold like twenty trillion dollars in assets or something like that. Listen, you don't you don't want to get in this discussion. You ever seen the the TikTok of the person dancing and they're going, I hope you know that actually ninety percent of publicly traded corporations are all uh, their institutional shareholders are majority held by Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street. Three companies. You don't understand. They don't have a mandate to actually run the companies. They are the stewards of the assets that have been given to them by their depositors. Listen, okay, we don't need to get into it. Just leave Jack Bogle's name out of your mouth when you're making these TikToks. That's a bad thing? I, I disagree. I mean, if, if Walmart owns Walmart and Sam's Club, that's too much consolidation for me. I would ask for them to be broken up. But everybody hates that kind of consolidation. All of a sudden, your local bank is saying, hey, uh, we don't have any money to pay you out. And everybody's like, fuck, I knew I should have been with J.P. Morgan. I do love Green Onion. I was, I was losing my mind when... Uh, I mean, this was like four or five years ago now, but DoorDash released like local data in their annual recap and they were like the number one the number one write in request for the Vancouver area is no green onions please and I was like I gotta move no green onions they're not only like uh, I find them delicious but they're also like they look nice and they're in they taste inoffensive to begin with I like I, I think they might in hindsight I think they might have made it up who the heck is ordering something and then saying, well, who, like, en masse is ordering something and saying no green onions, please? Like, it just seems like, I mean, like, no sauce is something I think I, I, I could expect to see on, like, some sandwich orders. No green onions, though? I mean, like, what are you doing? Most conservatives I know dislike green onions. Listen, I would be careful about drawing that kind of conclusion. <laughs> I don't know if there's... I'm not a, a political scientist. I have to imagine there's nothing causal in that relationship. What do you mean it's true? Come on. That does not track with the Vancouver data? That's true. We are a, we're a fairly uh, progressive city. 
I think we're a little bit like California. Like, I mean, obviously we're much smaller than the state, but I think for a mental model, you can think of it like that. Got some pockets for sure. I mean, like when Kate and I were looking at open houses, we, we were going to some neighborhoods in like Vancouver that I've never been to. And I was like, oh shit, like <laughs> the whole city is not a city. Like if you look at a map, like 90% of the city is actually kind of like a suburb. Unless you feel that a city is just like you have a neighbor on both sides of you. I mean, a, a city to me is like trains and apartment buildings. And then like restaurants and retail and like some entertainment options. Some of the neighborhoods we were going through, I was like, holy shit. There's the closest restaurant is like eight blocks away and it's a cactus club. What the fuck? I don't even want to talk about the, the GPT-4 stuff. Are we at the point yet where like if, if OpenAI put GPT-4 inside of a Boston Dynamics robot, like it's over for mankind? Are we there? Or is that going to be GPT-5? It's, it's a bit, uh, I try not to be scared of new technology, but I mean, some of the stuff people were posting on Twitter was like, Amazing. Check it out. This is going to change life for everybody. Here's the worst music video you've ever seen. And guess what? It was made entirely by computers. Help me. But some of the stuff was pretty crazy. I will say, though, you know, I still feel like... Sometimes people ask, oh, how do you feel about being a streamer knowing robots will soon be able to do your job? I don't want to sound like this could put me on the wrong side of history, but I guess if it does, I'd be like unemployed and dead anyway. But... I feel like the novelty of those AI-generated streams fell off kind of quick. Like there was the huge, like the novelty of the Seinfeld one going to the moon, and then it died, and now they're all at like, you know, 700 viewers or something. The same way, like, some of you maybe weren't around for this, but back in the day, people were like, everything is going to become a Twitch plays. People, I, I think they, are, they, and my, I count myself here as well, by the way. I think pe people are always, the, the baseline tendency of the average person is to be too dismissive of new things at first and then drastically overstate the way, like how much the world will change. Like when I first heard of VTubers, everyone was like, what the hell's a VTuber? Sounds messed up. Two weeks later, everyone was like, everyone on Twitch is about to be replaced with a VTuber. And now we're just like in a new world where there's like some people are streaming as people, some people are VTubers or some streams are VTubers and we're in like an equilibrium. I don't know, but I am kind of worried about like Skynet or whatever. Well, it's true. I guess I would say I, you're right to start with. People did underrate, well, at, at least like normies, underrated how transformative like the PC would be. But I guess what I'm also trying to say is, has it actually been transformative? Like, yeah, there's new... T Listen, give me a second here to work myself out of the hole I deliberately put myself in. Obviously, it's been super transformative. But have the base elements of life really changed? Now you wake up, you look at a computer, you get in the shower, you look at a computer... You drive to work, you're surrounded by computers. Instead of, you know, working with a cash register, you work with a computer. You go home, you hug your family, then you guys all look at your computers. I'm talking about, like, I, I am concerned about AI. I, I, basically, I'm concerned that ChatGPT4 is going to have the Riz. It's going to romance a Boston Dynamics police robot dog, and then they're going to create the T-1000, and then we're going to have to fight um, robots for the rest of our lives. And you've seen the movie, the foot comes down on the skull and crushes it, right? If it's just like I go to stream and I say, excuse me, GPT-4, um, can you uh, update my stream title? Yes, NL, what are you going to play today? Um, I don't know, just put me on Super Auto Pets. They just released Pack 17 Okay, would you like me to also send out a tweet that... Uh, you're going live? No, that's okay. The website died 32 years ago. Like that, that's, you know, the base elements of life are still the same. 
But if it's if I wake up and I'm wake I'm waking up because the robot sprinkler turned on and woke me up after my legally mandated three hours of sleep, and they're like, "Get back in the get back in the mine, get back in the cobalt mine," I'm gonna be like, "I fucking knew it." Everyone was so jazzed that you could make like a hot photo of yourself just by putting a shitty photo of yourself through an AI filter. Now my ass is down here in the cobalt mines. Even though it doesn't make any sense, because if the robots are so good, wouldn't they be better at mining cobalt than me? But whatever. Impling trap. No, no, no. Confuse enemies. They get close. Anyway, I think this is the final boss. <laughs> Maybe. Ooh, nice try. Nice try. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that one actually hit me, but I was cruising for a second there. Oh, oh, oh. You can't hit me, can't hit me, can't hit me, can't hit me. I'm like myth in chess boxing. It's called Enter the Gungeon, bitch. Oh, what are you gonna do? It's pretty simple. If you see a line, you just move to the side. Okay, I'm, re I'm ready for phase two. Wow. Oh, you're, you're actually easier than the bosses. This is an embarrassment. You should be embarrassed to call yourself the final boss. Okay, now he's flying around. Charge up a dash. I'm out of here. Okay, you can't just super dash away from him. That is new tech. Nice try. You may have forgotten to have a toddler. I'm capable of juggling two things at once. Trying to get a hard mode win in Super Auto Pets while simultaneously making sure that she doesn't swallow a double A battery. He's torched. Phase three? Phase three? I never thought I'd say this. They need to add a hard mode. Game's too easy. Congratulations. Thy pounded king giggled right good and proper. Thy sacred mausoleum lies in silence and safety for now. News stirs of a king's heir as chaos engulfs the fractured lands. May thee hanker to suck fresh bones from beyond the graveyard? Adventure awaits, but for now thou rests in peace. New game forever? Nah, it's okay. Top 10,000? I can live with that. Top 10,000. I don't know what we're going to do for the next one minute and six seconds. I mean, 54 minutes. It's 1.06 p.m. <laughs> Brain got a little twisted up there. I looked at the clock and said 1.06. Oh, man. I thought about Mario Maker, but here's the thing. If I'm playing Mario Maker like three years after its release, I only want to play Apollo levels. But if I play Apollo levels, I can't play in the Checkpoint League. I haven't been invited back to the Checkpoint League, but like, I might. It could happen. Let me think about it. Because right now I'm just, I'm looking in chat and I'm, and I'm basically just looking in chat to find things to say, to say no to. It's not a good habit. Instead, let's go to Steam 250. Let's see what's going on there. You got big ambitions. You got Bone Razor Minions. You got The Last Spell. You got some stuff that, like, we're obviously not going to play. I don't even need to say it out loud. The dude was a playboy when he was young. While after losing his job in big company, he became a handyman who takes cases from smartphone app. Even though money is short, but he somehow discovers a new paradise, dot, dot, dot. Incredibly large-chested cartoon women on the on the cover. I mean, they might just happen to be large chested, but something tells me that, <laughs> that they were drawn that way for a specific reason. Some of these games, man, how did, how did, is an honest question for the people that buy games like this. How do you know what a game is? When the game is called Shuffle, Episode 2, Tilda, Kami Nemo Akuma Nemo Nera Ware Tairu Otoko. How, how do you know what you're getting into? You speak the language? Yeah, but no, but you don't. Like most of you, at least. <laughs> I think. Or maybe I'm being presumptuous. This is Japanese, right? 
I know my analytics. I don't have a ton of Japanese viewers. I do have a lot of viewers from the Midwest, which I would assume is where the second most uh, Japanese speakers live. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong! Plus two, I'm from Indiana. It's just one point, but I'll take it. You know what? Let's just... I don't see anything that's, that's getting like out to me straight away. So why don't we just start our, uh, our dailies a little early here. I, I'm even going to slash marker this. I'm going to call it miscellaneous. Those of you on YouTube might not know that you've been deprived of, of a lot of content. Not a lot, maybe, but at least like once a day, we do daily uh, kind of pseudo trivia stuff. I'll give you a little smattering of it here. I'm not coming for the library of Letourneau's bread, because here's the thing. According to my Twitch contract, I can't upload content that I streamed until at least 24 hours after I live streamed it, okay? Library of Letourneau, I have no affiliation with them. They have a huge competitive advantage over me of being first to market. They, don't, they haven't signed a contract like that. They don't have to abide by the terms of that. So as a result, they, they get the right of first refusal. It's not a loophole. We're not, we're not affiliated. Anyway. Let me, let me open this up here. This one is called Movie to Movie. What you do is you start at one movie. In this case, it'll be the Chronicles of Riddick. And then you click on an actor in that movie. Then you click on a movie that they were in. And you're trying to get to this other movie. Now, I'm kind of losing my mind here. Because didn't we get to Justin Timberlake yesterday off of something? How did we get to Justin Timberlake yesterday? I was glycogenless at the end of the stream. Trolls? Dude, it wasn't through trolls. Can we... Oh, from the social network. That's true. Can we talk about the fact, and I don't know if anybody else is a two-year-old, by the way, on YouTube, this is also a lot of what you're missing. Justin Timberlake, he's not my favorite artist of all time, that his genre is not really my tempo. How did he drop um, Can't Stop the Feeling, which is like a nine out of 10 pop song on the Trolls 2 soundtrack? Like that wasn't even a cut from his album. They just asked him, hey, Justin, can you do a song for the Trolls movie? Here's a million dollars. And he's like, yeah, sure. Here's like the second best song I've ever written. Because he's a pro. He, he's got to be a pro. It's, it's nuts, man. It is Tim Folan. Hey, Tim Folan, here's the cover of an a, a Atari 2600 game. You got anything cooking up in the lab? Like it's... Anyway, also my toddler loves that song. She's, she's crazy about Don't Stop That Feeling. Every time before bed, she's like, I got that feeling in my body. What's number one, Justin Timberlake? I mean, for me, it's probably My Love. That's my, that's my JT era. But, I mean, Mirrors is okay, too. From, from the newer stuff that's probably only like 10 years old. Mother Lover's pretty good, too. Okay, sorry, sorry. We need Chronicles of Riddick. I saw this in theaters. It's got Vin Diesel, who's obviously in the Fast and the Furious films. Triple X. That's kind of it, though. No disrespect. He's made a lot of money at the box office. Um, it's got Dame Judi Dench. It's got Carl Urban. It's got Cal noted Canadian actor Calm Fior from um, Bon Cop, Bad Cop. It has... Um, Call Me Crazy. I think this might have Zoe Saldana in it as well. Let's, let's start here. It's Thandy Newton. What was I thinking? Keith David, too. So really, you got to think about In Time. And from In Time, we're trying to get to Justin Timberlake. So what movies has Justin Timberlake been in? He's been in Trolls 2, apparently, maybe, at least on the soundtrack. He's been in Bad Teacher. He's been in Southland Tales. Bad Teacher has Cameron Diaz. He's been in The Social Network. That has Jesse Eisenberg, who's also been in the DC movies. I can't remember how he connected to those yesterday, though. That is how we made it from The Social Network to, or from Riddick to The Social Network. Also has Army Hammer and Andrew Garfield in them. Andrew Garfield noted for the Spider-Man films. Army Hammer noted for eating 
uh, human flesh <laughs> and <laughs> being in Sorry to Bother You and The Lone Ranger. I'm thinking we can do a Vin Diesel to an action movie that has Tom Cruise to Night and Day, the movie that Tom Cruise did with Cameron Diaz to Bad Teacher to Justin Timberlake to In Time. So I'm basically, I'm setting myself up for a bogey. You guys seen Groot Takes a Bath yet? That's a, that's a classic uh, film. Groot Takes a Bath, probably my favorite. I mean, Groot's First Steps was pretty good, but Groot Takes a Bath was really where the series <laughs> hit its stride. So I remember we did Guardians of the Galaxy uh, special. We searched for Sean Gunn, James Gunn's brother, who's in all the movies, which allowed us to then get to The Suicide Squad. Yes. Which allowed us, and then I got stun locked here for a minute. I went Viola Davis to get back into the earlier Suicide Squad. Unless she, she was in Batman, which I don't believe she was. So we go back to 2016 Suicide Squad. And then, wait a minute. No, no, no. I, fudge. Because <laughs> uh, I remember we connected through Henry Cavill. We went to Black Adam. That's what we, okay. Take me back to Viola Davis. Black Adam. Henry Cavill. Henry Winkler. Straight through to uh, Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. I'm a little cooked on this one, but we at least got there. You know, it's strengthening the pathways from yesterday. And what was that, like seven? Yeah, it was seven. That's pretty bad. Riddick did Vin Diesel, Guardians of the Galaxy, Holiday Special, Sean Gunn, Suicide Squad, Viola Davis, Suicide Squad, Viola Davis, Black Adam, Henry Cavill, Batman vs. Superman, Jesse Eisenberg, Social Network, Justin Timberlake, In Time. So we did our best, okay? We got there. Someone said, can you do actoral? I never get actoral. Okay, I'll try. I'll try actoral, but I will say... Uh, okay, first off, I'm trying to put dark mode on and on actoral, and it's not working. I'm I'm moving the slider, and the slider is not moving to dark mode. I'm also going to tell you that the first movie this person was in was in 1973, so I'm not doing actoral today. I will do the superior actoral, which is known as the Rotten Tomatoes Daily. It's a two-word science fiction movie from 1984. It's an hour and 48 minutes long. Critics loved it. This is the... Terminator. I'm the greatest player of all time. I Nobody can stop me when it comes to the Rotten Tomatoes Daily, and that's why I love it. We have had a couple that... Well, we've had three that didn't make it, but that's okay. Do some Ranktal? I forgot about Ranktal. Ranktal is pretty good. This is a short one. E4. Okay, they're playing the Scan... Oh, they're not even... The Scandinavian denied to an E6, to a Czech... These players are like 500, in my opinion. That's, they're lower than 500. This is probably the worst move on the board next to just letting it get captured. A move, this move makes no sense. There's no purpose to it at all. Um, I, <laughs> again, I can't imagine where this is going. Okay, knight to here. That seems like an acceptable move. Okay, they, they cover it. I, I don't know why they moved the pawn. Takes us, whatever. Like, okay, they've capped. Okay, all right. I understand. They were protecting their existing. No, you just take with the queen. What the hell is going on, man? You take the bishop? Okay, their pawn structure is insane. What are you doing? Okay, now you simply capture the knight with your pawn. Yeah, and then if they capture the ro oh, they capture the pawn, you just take the. This is unbelievable. Um, this is one hundred to five ninety nine. It can't be higher than that. Seven ninety eight. They're two hundred elo below the last people. The last people played like a real game of chess. This was just moving pieces. Okay, what the hell is this? What on earth am I seeing here? This seems non-standard, to put it politely. Now, the pawn on move five, the pawn structure on white is not what you want to see, okay? First off, we're five moves in. 
they somehow have uh, an orphaned pawn in the middle. Their king is completely exposed on all diagonals, and they've only developed one piece, and it's to a place where they can't get any defense with the pawn. So, like, I don't know. Unless this is some kind of levy gambit, this is uh, this seems pretty bad. We're moving pieces. We're pushing P. That's got to be a misclick, right? Like, taking the rook is like a free check, and then you get the other rook or their queen. That's got to be a misclick. That gets taken, and then they resign. No, they cancel queen side because Levy said under 1,500, you don't resign, so they're under 1,500. <laughs> okay, this, this must be bullet, right? Like, move down to threaten the knight, push this pawn for no reason, lose the knight. Okay, this is 100 to 599, man. Even the opening fell apart. 662 is so much higher than I, I could have expected. How bad do you have to... It's 10 minutes. You're right, it's 10 minutes. What the hell? How do you... How do you get to 100 to 599 then? Like, is it even possible? Like, Dan is a or Dan is 400 in bullet. I don't know why I thought Dan was 100. What else do we? Oh, we love guess the game. Guess the game. Yesterday it was Crash Bandicoot one. To me, this looks like a a planet just exploded in Mass Effect one. Metacritic score of 79. This looks like um. This looks like an Earth Defense Force game or something. Let's, let's call this Earth Defense Force 2025. Oh, no. PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Catalogs Island. That's a Lego dude? Or is that a Mega Man dude? Oh, no. I skip. It's a Capcom, lad. It's a fighting game. Marvel Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. Let's go! Say, as soon as I saw the genre, I was like, I can do this. There's a lot of dolls. I'm just, I'm finding it here. Here we go. OEC.world slash EN slash tradle. Okay. This is, this is crazy. I am going, I, don't say your expectations too high. Let's put it that way. 14% concentrated milk. 6% sheep and goat meat, 5% frozen beef, 4% butter, 3% cheese, um, aluminum, rough wood, fruits, wine, malt extract. I'm looking at this, total exports, $39 billion. I'm looking at this, and I, immediately I'm thinking, I, I know this sounds crazy, I'm thinking this is Central Asia. I'm going to say $39.6 billion doesn't seem like a ton of trade. I'm going to say that this is, let me start with Uzbekistan, and we'll go from there. Okay, what is, we're 14,000 kilometers away. Does this mean to the bottom right? Planes, helicopters, or spacecraft? It's got to be like a pretty developed country if they're exporting like space. I'm assuming it's not a space shuttle, but even like components used in space exploration gold plastic housewares lots of plastic gas turbines butter <laughs> sheep and goat meat and the only when i think of sheep and goat meat i think of like afghanistan and then i think of like i mean for sheep you think of new zealand is 14,000 kilometers from uzbekistan that is 100 percent correct Wait a minute. Okay, this game kind of goes crazy. John Coping Central. This is like a Denmark train station in... Be inclined to say that this is 1950 even. 1945, I'll take it. This is France. Um... Oh, this is, this is uh, like 2016. 2015. That's, embar that's even worse than being off by five years because this literally happened like less than a decade ago when I remember. It's hard to tell because they're wearing their same, like they're wearing a uniform. From the hairstyle, from the glasses, from the facial hair, 
to me, this looks like just after the era my parents were in high school. Let me take a 1985 on this. Oh, no! <laughs> 1971. Oh, dude, me at the business factory. I have to imagine that this is like the early 1980s, late 1970s. Give me 1980 even, 1973. This one's, it's just tough, honestly. It's past the invention of helicopters. I think it's just a black and white photo from a relatively modern time. Like, I think this could also be the 70s or maybe like the late 60s, 1984. <laughs> was, that's definitely like the worst chrono photo daily I've ever had. When were helicopters invented? 1940s? They weren't they, 1940 BCE. Come on. They weren't invented until Da Vinci, right? And plus, Da Vinci didn't even invent that shit. He literally just drew one and then said, you figure it out. They were invented by whoever found the document, probably Nicolas Cage in National Treasure or something like that. Da, da Vinci gets so much credit just for being like, what if there was a machine that could fly? He didn't do anything. He's not a right brother. Okay, Globla. Guess any country? I'm easy. Give me Algeria. It's very far from Algeria. No, it's reasonably... Actually, that's pretty close. Closest border, 560. Let's say it's... Um, hit me with a little Libya. It's further away. Hit me with a little Senegal. Further away. Hit me with a little... Portugal? No, we already had Portugal and Global. Hit me with a little... A little France? It's even further away. <laughs> um, <laughs> hit me with a little... Lesotho. That's cooler. That's, uh, that was not the country I thought it was. My African geography is not very good. So uh, Algeria is still the closest, and Senegal is kind of close. Okay, give me Nigeria. Now it is 130 kilometers away. Give me Ghana. It's Ghana is adjacent to the answer. Give me Togo. Togo is adjacent to the answer too. Give me Mali. Uh, Mali is adjacent to the answer. Give me um. Giddy Bizu. Giddy Bizu. It's cool. It's cooler. Okay, all right. We can all relax. Get cooler. Give me Benin. Benin is adjacent to the answer. <laughs> Give me the central. No, 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 no. Give me Sierra Leone. <laughs> Liberia is on the coast. Oh, dude, what the? What country is that? Give me Burkina Faso. Hey, okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, that was a tough one. There are four or five movies to find in each puzzle. Swap tiles to organize them into rows and or columns representing movies that all share a common element. Tiles turn yellow when three tiles that belong together are in the same row or column. How can there be five, movie, five movies with four rows and columns? Certain tiles will cross over. However, there are many different possible patterns of four and five movie grids. You have 15 tile swaps. Share your grid after you play. I'm looking. I'm looking. I see... I see Spike Lee. Bank robbery. This is the inside job. I, wait, I see Eddie Brock. Topher Grace. Sandman. James Franco, I'm swapping, I'm putting, I'm doing minimum amount of swaps. So I'm going to make Spider-Man 3 in this column. I'm going to move Sandman here, and I'm going to move James Franco here. Then, I know that Topher Grace is in Black Klansman, directed by Spike Lee, 
and also has either Denzel Washington or Jodie Foster in it and is about a hate group. So I don't I feel like I would know if Denzel Washington was in Black Klansman. So I'm going to assume Jodie Foster was involved in some way. That's incorrect. I'm going to put Denzel. It's a different movie. Or are we getting... Oh, because if Jodie Foster was yellow, then she was part of... Uh, what, what, what's happening? Okay. Um, it takes place in Mississippi, presumably. <laughs> Lady Gaga, huh? Lady Gaga. She's been... In, oh, wait, wait. House of Gucci. Adam Driver. Lady Gaga. House fashion hang on this is let grid me what what have we done these three are all in a movie together about mississippi oh a fashion house lady gaga adam driver fits in right there okay and then i'm losing it man what the hell does orange mean james franco sandra bullock Lady Gaga. <laughs> there's orange means it's done. What does purple mean? Spike. Okay, this this is bank robbery. This is the inside man. Yeah. Movies four of five. Now do the top row. What's what's wrong with? Tell me what's wrong. How do I translate four columns of different colors into the correct? permutation for the puzzle the glow the glow so these three are like th these three are indicative of being the fifth movie and then the hot swap gets uh, okay all right i understand Maybe it just has a learning curve because that one, that one felt good. That felt good. Okay, let's put me back on another one. I see Meg Ryan. I see Tom Hanks. I see Sleepless. I see Seattle. I'm crying already. Two, two hot swaps. Robin Williams biopic Doctor. That's going to be a Patch Adams. Let's just... And I, I, I see Al Pacino and Dog Day Afternoon. Okay, so like give me a Patch Adams. Give me a Sleepless in Seattle. You're right. This game is crazy good. It just needs a... A, 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 I was not going to say a better tutorial, okay? It just needs a tutorial that also is better for stupid people like myself. Now, I also see Tom Hanks' biopic, A Beautiful Day in Your Neighborhood. So that's like movie number five. And then I see Dog Day Afternoon with Al Pacino. So we move day over here. And then, and then, I'm, then I have a problem. Christopher Nolan... Hang on. No, no, no. I don't have a problem because Christopher Nolan was sleepless with Robin Williams and Al Pacino in the movie Insomniac. <laughs> Hang on. Now I'm, I'm very confused. <laughs> Wait, that's five of five. Well, we got blank spaces. You could do it with blank spaces. Does that mean you're amazing at the game? Sometimes there's decoys. Oh, because Harry Styles is in Dunkirk, directed by Christopher Nolan. Do you think Harry Styles... <laughs> I can't believe... That I've only seen one clip from the Oscars, and it was um, Jimmy Kimmel asking Malala Yousafzai if she thinks that Harry Styles spat on Chris Pine. I think maybe... Your work on human rights and education for women and children is an inspiration. As the youngest Nobel Prize winner in history, I was wondering, do you think Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine? I only talk about peace. That's, you know what? That's why you're Malala and nobody else is. That was my, like, uh, do we deserve destruction moment. What did she, she replied? Like, I'm only interested in world peace or something like that. Oh, man. Okay, this, I don't know this yet. I'm taking a look. J.K. Simmons, Vince Vaughn, Baby Mask, Killer, Wedding Singer, Adam Sandler. This little known Gen Z actor just became the highest grossing movie star. Okay, here's what I see. Andy Samberg, Never Stop Stopping. 
Andy Samberg, Kristen Wiig is in that movie too. And he's a singer. Bro, bro, Kristen, you motherfuckers, I made an error. Kristen Wiig is in Pop Star Never Stop Stopping. Never Stop Never Stopping. They made a mistake, dude. One swap left. Send it. What did I miss here? Solution. Time loop college campus baby mass killer. I don't know this one. Wedding Rebel Wilson Kristen Wig maid. Oh, Rebel Wilson is a fucking bridesmaids, you idiot. She plays Kristen Wig's roommate that tells her to get out of the house or whatever. Just for posterity, Kristen Wig is not in Pop Star. I might be thinking of Maya Rudolph. Who tries to sell Andy Samberg a fridge? Is that Maya Rudolph or is that Kristen Wig? Or is that Kristen Shaw? That's Maya Rudolph. Well, I was I was way off. Okay, Jack Quaid. Jenna Ortega. Reboot. That's Scream. Woodsboro. That's Scream. Scream 5. Okay, look at that. Sorted. Taryn Edgerton. Rocket. Elton John, of course. I don't know who else is in that movie, but we gotta, we gotta at least hot swap it. This one's gotta change. Chris Pratt, Will Ferrell, Taron Edgerton, because this is two different movies like wedged into one. Okay, Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, reboot, prehistoric. That's Jurassic World. Will Ferrell in The Land Before Time, not The Land Before Time, Land of the Lost, which is a reboot. But then we need reboot to connect to all these movies and I'm, I'm dying. The hell is Ducky? Duck, Ducky's from the land before time. Time. <laughs> Duck land, prehistoric. Ducky, land, prehistoric. Give me time. We got the land before time in here now. We got three of five movies. Will Ferrell, Rock, El, Rocket, Elden John, is Bryce Dallas Howard in... Oh! <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard is in Rocket Man, apparently. Construction worker Will Ferrell... Oh, it must be a Lego Batman. How am I supposed to know that? The Lego movie. By the way, I don't see enough people saying, holy cow, I didn't know NL was cool. How does NL know Scream 2022? Come here, kid. Came to Netflix like five days ago in Canada. I'm not done with it yet, though. I'm only, I, mean, I think I've just started the third act. You could definitely do superhero Michael B. Jordan. Although he's kind of a supervillain in Black Panther. I guess he's in the Fantastic Four, too. You got Gene Wilder, children's novel, chocolate, grandparent. Okay. You've got Chronicle, found footage, Michael B. Jordan. This is going to be like Chronicles of Narnia, I can already tell. Religious symbolism in the Chronicles of Narnia. Superhero is Chronicle. I'm going sicko mode. I see Kiki's delivery service. Kiki is a witch. I'm the greatest player this game's ever seen. I don't even, Tom Hanks code, religious symbol, it's the Da Vinci code. This game is amazing. All right, I don't know if my wife is streaming today because we got to go visit the daycare we just got accepted to a little later and then give them 12 post-dated checks. She's not? All right, Vince Carter JPEG. I got one more in me. Aaron Taylor Johnson. And it is not, you know, it could be timed. It could be, um, it could be Tenet. It's not kick-ass, I think. Could be Tenet. Assassin's Train. I don't see, uh, J Japan, I don't see time travel. You know what I do see? I see Amy Adams, Nocturnal Animals. I don't know what the third one is, though. Horror Curse Japan, I know that one. That's Sarah Michelle Geller. Drug addict, married, 
Edinburgh. Okay, Angelina Jolie, Assassins, Smith, married. And now we got, okay, this is train spotting. So that's four, right? And then we got to figure out how we're going to get the fifth one. We got train spotting, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, The Grudge, Nocturnal Animals. I didn't know Aaron Taylor Johnson was in that. Okay, where's the connection? That, that's hard. That's hard to have not gotten any other clues here. Ah, 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 ah. Japan, train, Aaron Tyler Johnson. It's bullet train 2022. <laughs> oh, you know what? I got one more in me. What a great game. Oh, this one. Average 4.6 out of 5. I see Larry Flint. I don't see any actors' names. I see, I see the people versus Larry Flint. Okay, good start. I see, I see dead people. Which is uh, the sixth sense. I see dead, this is too easy. I see dead poet society. And then I see some genres. <laughs> Hang on. Now I'm so confused because I was trying to get like the names to match up. Okay, let me see. There's Larry. There's Poets. No, we don't know that for sure yet. We got to do like some swaps in the middle here. Give me a hot swap. We learned nothing. Give me a hot swap. Um, uh, okay, well, isn't this just a hot swap then? Oh, iRobot, Sunny is the name of the robot, sci-fi. And then I come and see World War II, I guess. I don't know come and see. What is come and see? I thought that was like a horror movie. I see Sigourney Weaver. Okay, scratch that. I see Tom Hardy. Road, Desert, Apocalypse. I see Martin Sheen, Smell of Napalm. It's Apocalypse Now. Francis Ford Coppola. Easy. Then I see Apocalypse, Tom Hardy, Desert, Road. So swap these and swap that. There you go. Am I crazy now? I'm like, <laughs> Apocalypse, X-Men Apocalypse, Charles Xavier. They've got Magneto in solitary confinement. Digging. You know what? Sigourney Weaver's in holes. Digging in the desert with Sigourney Weaver. And maybe that movie is about... Oh, Ch wait, Charles, Tom Hardy, solitary con confinement. He's in... Uh, prison. He fights. Isn't this is this Bronson or is, am I just thinking of Charles Bronson? He's taped up. Oh fuck! He's got an alter ego. Okay, what is that movie? It is Bronson. And then <laughs> I can't parse this man. <laughs> I can't parse this. It's like we need a hot swap one to the other. Ah, okay. Alter Ego, Francis Ford Coppola, and Digging is Dracula. With Trip, maybe. Ha! Wait, Hot Swap These? <laughs> College Road Tape Trip? It's Road Trip! What was I thinking? It's Road Trip! I got anytime you got two blanks, you just hot swap them. You're good to go. Oh man, what a game! Scotty doesn't know. Excuse me, that's Euro Trip, not Road Trip. All right, slash marker misc end. 
I'll send you over to Justin's stream if Kate's not going live today. Enjoy the rest of, uh, of his stream. His subathon is going live for a, is still live for a few days at this point. Um, I will see you tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to play, but I'll see you tomorrow. Later. Well, aerial mist for you. Look at this mist. Isn't it neat? Doesn't it make your uninstallation complete? Don't I look like the pog? The pog who has everything. <laughs> Sorry. What is it called? Javelin tackle. I want to eat where the streamers are. I want to dolphin dive into tackle. Popping my ult when you do your, what is it called? Atomic punchline. Sorry. <laughs> so, but I can't stop. I'm not gonna, just cause I said sorry doesn't mean I'm gonna stop. Up where they pog, up where they stun, up where they spin mist all day for their fun. Wish I could 